Hey fellas, Adam Russman here with the Space Wolf blog, and today I wanted to talk about some fluffy characters, some fluffy character builds using the one thing that Space Wolves, I think, do better than any other army out there, and that's the ability to make a really fascinating multi-kit combo or kit bashing a model that plays fun, it looks cool, it's visually interesting, but also you can use it in a lot of other ways. So right here we're looking at a model that's been kit bashed from the Space Wolf normal box set. There's a couple bits in there from I think the uh, Terminator box set, uh, the head specifically, the new Space Wolf upgrade pack, and also uh, some bits from Chrom Dragon Gaze uh, set as well. And as you guys can see, this guy has a big old frost axe on his right hand. He's got a, you know, probably a frost sword or a power sword, whatever you want to do, in his left hand. Pretty cool looking backpack, a wolf pelt, and he's ready to go. Now, doesn't have a pistol. Some might say, hey man, what's up with that? Well, here's my thinking in regards to that. You know, I've got tons of different models. I want to make some stuff that looks more visually interesting. Uh, this guy could be a wolf guard battle leader. He could be a wolf guard in a squad. He could be a lone wolf. He can be a wolf lord. And that's kind of the cool thing about uh, Space Wolves, is that you can really individualize a character, make them look really cool, really visually interesting. I mean, that axe, they just did a phenomenal job on that axe. I love that frost axe. It just looks menacing. You know, some, some people might want to use it to make some other Space Wolf characters, like Brom Redmall. He's got some pretty cool uh, rules in some of the Forge World stuff. I'm actually going to be working on a project with him. I have an extra axe that I'm going to use for that. And also I have a model that I'll make him the, uh, the red maul when he transforms into a giant werewolf. So I wanted to sit down and kind of talk about some options for this guy to load him out in an interesting way. Uh, look at the points and kind of look at what that would translate to how he would play on the field to kind of make the argument that, yeah, there's some over points here. I mean, you're paying 20 points for a a frost sword and 20 points for a frost axe. But how would that really translate into play? What could you do with that? And would it be worth taking? Or is it just a waste of points? I mean, there's an option there as well. The one thing I can say is that if you go math heavy, math hammering, which I'm not a big fan of, and basically break down the fundamental structure of the game, if your math is strong, you know, <laughs> you're strong with the math force, you know, you're, you're kind of putting yourself in a position of advantage that, like I said before, kind of breaks the game. You know, you know statistically where you're going to be at. There's always luck involved. There's always a certain randomness when you play the game. But in the, in the short run, I mean, it's a way of getting past the random fun of it. And the whole point that I play is I don't know what the future is going to tell me. You know, am I going to lose? Am I going to win? How well am I going to do? Is a certain unit going to do very well? Is a certain unit going to do very poorly? Is it just a case of dumb luck? Or did I just have a bad you know, roll of dice? That's what makes it entertaining and fun with me. And so I've reached the point where back in 5th edition, I was running the average Power Fist multi melta for my Wolfguard Sergeant. And you know, drop potting coming down. It was the same formula. Every one of my squads looked the same. And I kind of felt that it was really dull, especially in the 5th edition Space Wolf book, how they specifically told you that no two warriors could be outfitted with the same gear if they were a special character. So even in the game sense, Games Workshop was putting rules in there to kind of guide the Space Wolf players to be a little bit more individuals, not to be so you know, focused on min-maxing the effectiveness of the squad. Now this isn't saying that you need to go and buy a double uh, frost yeah. axis for everybody and just waste points. No, there are some point efficiencies you need to look at to play the game well. But every once in a while, you can throw a couple of points at a certain character and you know see what happens, see how it unfolds. Have some, some uh, tales to tell how badass this character did or how he just went out there and died how he wanted to die 
being the lone wolf that he is. All right, guys, so let's talk about how this guy is outfitted in my army. Well, he started off as a wolf guard battle leader, and then he kind of took a place in a squad of blood claws as just their wolf guard upgrade. Okay, so that's kind of where he uh, where he fits in. He's part of Ragnar's great company. Um, but after I was done building them, I was like, oh man, he looks awesome. And I started building some other guys for three other uh, blood claw units. I've got some big blood claw units, but they're all on the smaller 25 millimeter basis. So I wanted to make some guys on 32 millimeter basis. So here's another guy. He's got the uh, axe from the Thunderwolf Cavalry. He's got a Thunderwolf Cavalry head. He's got one of the new upgraded Space Wolf uh, shoulder pads and a power fist. And he's got Krom's cape. So that's my other blood claw sergeant that I'm working on. You guys can see he's been spray painted black and I've dry brushed layers of silver. That's how I got the silver effect in this guy. And then last but not least is another wolf guard sergeant. Now this guy's a little bit different. He's got a sword here and a storm shield. He will probably be played as a storm shield and an axe. There's the other frost axe, which actually is just half of this frost axe model wise. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, they didn't do much change on that. So, and uh, actually he's going to be a, he might be to a, uh, not a blood claw. Oh yeah, he's going to be a blood claw sergeant as well. Little uh, shield right there as well. He's got a head again from the Thunderwolf Cavalry. Got a little, you know, get his drink on once he's done slaying his enemies. The backpack is from the Thunderwolf Cavalry as well. So these are my new sergeants. Now, the cool thing with these guys too is that they could be lone wolves, they could be wolf guard battle leaders, or they can be wolf lords themselves. I think they all have a commanding presence, they're all visually interesting, and they all have several options in regards to normal uh, pieces of equipment I can take or relics I can take to make them look pretty, pretty awesome. So let's talk about this guy first and some different ways that I would throw gear on him. So. If I take him as a wolf guard upgrade, so let's say for a blood claw, I'm looking at the 14 points normal I get for a, a blood claw, adding 10 points to him for uh, the wolf guard upgrade, and then 20 points per model. So he's 64 points coming out of the gates for what he gets. Now, that wouldn't be bad if he got the rage special rule for when he charged. But they did FAQ that and say, hey, you know, wolf guard uh, leaders, pack leaders don't benefit for that. It's only for the blood claw only. So looking at his uh, stat line, you know, weapon skill four, ballista skill four, strength four, toughness four, one wound, initiative four. He does have two attacks. He's leadership nine. Um, so he does have that frost sword and the frost axe. Now. What does that do for him? It does give him two close combats, so he does get that bonus attack for the close combat, but you have to pick one uh, before you uh, choose. So you can pick the uh, Frost Sword if you're fighting AP3 guys. It gives you that plus one strength, so your strengths are going to be strength five, uh, AP3, and he's looking at you know three, two attacks base, plus one for additional close combat weapon, so four attacks, uh, when he, on the charge, strength five, initiative four. Or if you want a little extra strength, you can add the ax in there. If you're not caring, you don't care about going last, your initiative is gonna be reduced to one, but you're gonna be at strength six with uh, those four attacks. So all in all, you know, it's, it's still pretty AP two though. That's the other thing. So AP three, AP two. All in all, it, it's not that, you know, awesome of a, of a way to go. That's a really point heavy one wound model. Now you could drop five points here and say, hey, okay, this is just a normal power weapon. Or you could even say, hey, I'm not going to run this as a power sword. I'm not going to run this as a power axe. I'm going to run it as a power, a, a frost sword. And then you get two attacks that way. And then you're looking at 15 and 20 instead of 20 and 20. Either way, um, you know, you're losing the extra strength there. So maxed out that way, he's kind of a point sink, you know. Um, of course, you can just say he has one weapon and he just, the, he just modeled that way. If, if you're a staunch, what you see is what you get type of dude, well, you can go that way. I've even thought about finding a uh, left side pistol holster and putting a holster on his left side and just adding that after the fact so he's still modeled with a pistol. And, you know, 
maybe he throws his sword on his back or whatnot. So there used to be some different ways uh, that you could have, you know, more than two weapons. Uh, but the way that the Space Wolf is written, especially the relics, you do have to dump one of your built-in weapons to get something else. So now there are some models that can just get a, you know, Storm Shield. Uh, like some of the Blood Angel captains and stuff, you can just buy a Storm Shield. It doesn't replace something else. Um, and then you can, you know, have uh, more than one weapon. But you still have to pick which weapon you're fighting with in the game sense. So let's talk about him as a Lone Wolf. Now this is when he kind of gets a little bit more interesting. So how he's loaded out right now, he is 60 points. So he's 5 points less than the Wolfguard Pack Leader. His stats are significantly better than his weapon skill five, two wounds. He's still he's leadership eight, so that that does sting. And he, but he has the same amount of attacks for five extra points. So you're getting one extra weapon skill and one extra wound. But he also has a slew of other rules that go along with the lone wolf. So with that include eternal warrior, fearless, feel no pain, and monster hunter. So you know you're rerolling your wounds for monster hunter. You got that five up, feel no pain, and then of course, if you get doubled out, you have Eternal Warrior, so it's not killing him, you know, out the gate. So, in all essence, a Lone Wolf is really is really only five or six points more expensive than a Wolf Guard Pack Leader, uh, but he does have two wounds and uh, one extra weapon skill, which is something to consider when you look at the rule set for the Wolf Guard Pack Leader. I actually do think they should be a two wound model, uh, but they're not, and that feel no pain is a you know, force multiplier. You'll notice this guy doesn't have an invulnerable safe. We're not throwing him a Terminator armor. We don't throw a Storm Shield on him. Um, that combination with the Lone Wolf can be a real tar pit for different units. And also you have the option to throw on two uh, Fenrisian Wolves on there, which I usually always do if, uh, if I'm not putting this guy in a drop pod and then dropping him in somebody's backfield. So that adds a lot of options. You're looking at him, 60 points. He's coming in with two attacks, plus two additional close combat weapon, which is three, and then on the charge is four attacks. If it's a monstrous creature, you have some reroll functions in regards to that. You will have to pick which weapon you want to use again. If you want plus one strength. Zax, I actually think, works very well with Lone Wolves because they have the survivability to stay in there anyway. And even though I'm not a huge fan of how they actually work, I don't think they should be unwieldy. But I'm such a you know Space Wolf fan, and you got to have some axes in there. You just got to do it. Yeah, it's slow, uh, but the AP2 does go a long way. And uh, sometimes he can get in there and, and snipe some of those uh, characters. So that those strength six attacks is, is pretty nasty. And if you're playing a you know any formation that gives you that furious charge special rule, and you're looking at that you know plus one strength, so you're getting some strength seven attacks in there. That can be pretty nasty as well. Now, if we make him a Wolf Guard Battle Leader, the way I have him pointed out right now is for about 120 points. So, weapon skill 5, list skill 5, which doesn't matter, he's having a gun anyway. Still strength 4, toughness 4, 2 wounds, initiative 5, so that bump in initiative, 3 base attacks, leadership 9, with a 3 up save. Now, one thing I did, if you're playing the normal Space Wolf Codex with this guy, uh, I actually like the Black Death, which is a Power Axe, plus 2 Strength, AP 2, Melee, Unwieldy, and Whirlwinds of Death. The Bear of the Black Death gains plus 3 attacks for the duration of any fight subphase in which he is locked in combat that contains more enemy models than friendly. I think that would be a phenomenal thing to give to a Lone Wolf, but too bad that Lone Wolves can't have Relics, which is kind of silly. But if you're throwing him in a squad, a small squad or anything like that, or taking him up against some kind of you know, larger squad unit, that could come into play, which could be pretty nasty. So you're looking at three attacks base, plus one for additional close combat weapon, that's four. If he charge, that's five. And then if he gets this plus three attacks, that's eight strength six AP2 attacks. That's pretty awesome. You know, throw a wolf priest in there, so he's got preferred enemy for whatever you're fighting, or if he's you know within Ulrich's uh, preferred enemy range, of a unit that's pretty strong as well. So it gets to be pretty cool. And that's a whole 120 points. Now, the Black Death is only a 25 point upgrade from a normal Frost Axe. Uh, Frost Axes are 20 points. Frost Blades are 20 points. So it just makes sense to go that route. Um, now, you do have a point break when you go up to a Wolf Lord for some of the equipment. 
you know, it just it feels good. It feels good to me. Do you want to save a couple points instead of giving him a frost blade? You could just give him a power weapon for 15 points and save that you know, that extra plus one strength uh, for for the, the power weapon, and then he would go down to uh, the 115 point mark. It all depends on you know what kind of flavor you want. That plus one strength you know can make a huge difference. Now again, like I said before, if you have two special piece of war gear, you do have to announce and pick which one you're using and all your attacks have to go towards that. You can't split them up and say, hey, I'm going to do four attacks with my axe and four attacks with my sword. Can't do that. I mean, there are some special rules for like Logan Grimnar to do that. I think he can still do that. I know he can do it in fifth edition, um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he can still do that now. But you do have to pick for your normal guys. Now this guy is a wolf lord. Add 30 more points to him, but now he's weapon skill six. He's got three wounds, he's initiative five, he's got four attacks, leadership 10. And he's got a four up and vulnerable. So for 30 extra points, the four up and vulnerable, the additional attack, the additional wound, the additional weapon skill, of course the invulnerable save. Now at this point your, uh, your frost sword is 20 points, you can choose to get rid of that. For extra 20 points you could also add runic armor which would give you a two up, six up, but you already have the four up invulnerable. I would just stick to that. The runic armor doesn't really make sense for anybody, but Iron Priest and Ruin Priest for me, it's just a lot of points. So on the charge, he's got five base attacks with his additional close combat weapon. The charge is six, and if he's outnumbered, he's looking at nine attacks at weapon skill six, at strength six. It's pretty nasty, and he just looks pretty badass. Another option you could do, which is an extra five points, is uh, make the power sword the fang of the ice wolf. You're giving this guy two relics. It is really pricey. I mean, now he is, now he's looking at 175 points, but you now have rending attacks and hellfrost with that that ice wolf. So if you're going up against a fast opponent that you really don't want to uh, let him attack you if he's got something nasty, and you don't want to give up your initiative strikes, well. You know that's that's the way to go in regards to that. So you can switch out that other that other axe as well. Just dump it as a power axe, make it a power weapon. So now it's 15 points, and then go for the uh, Fang of the Ice Wolf, uh, making that a plus one strength, AP three melee, Hellfrost, and rending. And I will tell you guys, the Hellfrost rule, when it's not as cool, if you pair it up with some other type of weapons that that uh, you know affect model strengths. Uh, it can be pretty cool. All right, guys, so let's pull this fella aside and this guy up here. So a ton of different things we can do with him. You know, we can give him the power fist. I'm actually a fan of power fists. I just like the fluff behind them. But we might do something with different from the axe, not making it the Black Death. Maybe just making it, you know, something as simple as the, you know, the crack and bone. The Kraken Bone Sword, 35 points plus one strength, AP2, melee, master crafted uh, from the Champions of Fenris book. But he, he definitely has a look of uh, the Wolf Guard. That cape really does add a regal part to him. I think he might be the next guy that I paint. This guy over here, you know, just wanted to do something a little bit different. You know, I'll leave the, the, the chain sword on there. I was actually going for a model to look somewhat similar to the front of the old 5th edition Space Wolf book when he had an axe in his right hand and a chain sword in his left and I threw the, the shield on there. Maybe that's his invulnerable save. This guy's kit bashed from a couple of different pieces as well. So, I'm digging that. Chrom Dragon Gaze can be fun. He's not the best Wolf Lord out there by any means Wolf Lord build, but he's pretty interesting. I love the model. I think they did an awesome job with him. He was really fun to paint. And uh, I do actually like the rule sets that came in the the uh, in the Stormclaw box set with his with what's left of his great company, or you know people that are uninjured. So he's pretty neat. Now this is Torfin Daggerfist. I built this guy specifically based off what was in the Champions of Fenris book. I read the fluff about him. He's pretty awesome. So he does lead my Void Claws. I've been playing that formation. Uh, if not, he comes down as a Wolf Guard Battle Leader, Weapon Skill 5, Blitz Skill 5, Strength 4, Toughness 4, 2 Wounds, Initiative 5, 3 Attacks, Base, Leadership 9, and of course he has a Saving of 3. Now, the way I arm him is the Armor of Asvald Stormrack and Morakai's Claws. So the Armor, of course, gives him a 2-up, 4-up, so he's got a better Invulnerable save. He also has a bulky uh, Deep Strike, and it will not die relentless special rules but can't make sweeping attacks so it's just a little bit juiced up 
the Terminator armor. You are paying for some extra points, but I will tell you that it will not die has saved his butt out there. Uh, and I've been very, very lucky with him. Um, he's done pretty well. Now, the Morakai's claws are pr pretty awesome. Plus one strength, AP3, uh, melee, maul, rending, shred, and of course, especially weapons. So in close combat, the bearer of Morakai's claw gains D3 attacks instead of one. We're fighting with two weapons. So, you know, his base attacks are three. He at least gets four. He might get six. And then for charging, he might get seven. Uh, the uh, rending and shred, you know, that's it can be pretty nasty. So you can have those AP2 hits with it um, that automatically wound no matter what the, the strength is. So even things that the strength five isn't really doing much to uh, can actually, you know, be pretty nasty. He's, he's taken down uh, some, some Wraith Knights and uh, some other big old monstrous creatures in his day with those lightning claws that people thought weren't going to do that, that, that well. Now, if you want to go crazy, you can add the Pelt of the Beowulf for 10 points to give him fear. And um, people automatically fail the fear test at their Beast Calvary or Monstrous Creature unless they have they will know no fear or the fear of the special rules. Also, the uh, Fell Claw's teeth for 15 points. Uh, that means he can reroll all fail to hit in close combat. But if I'm playing Champions of Fenris, it's kind of a waste because he's going to get to do that anyway if he's going to be in a challenge, which he has to challenge, or somebody has to challenge from his squad. So, but really love the way he uh, plays. And another commanding-looking model. Really like him. So we also have my Ragnar. I'm actually going to start making another Ragnar. I saw somebody online who made a very second-edition-themed-looking Ragnar uh, with some of the kits from this piece. Uh, what he did with the head and the hair, I liked even better, even the backpack with the flag. So I'll be making a new Ragnar. And he, this Ragnar will probably just become a Wolfguard battle leader. But for right now, he's my Ragnar. I'm pretty happy with him. See, even next to Krom, they still look a little bit different. This was my original RJ. He had a, I know he has a Frost Axe, but I didn't have a Thunder Hammer bit during the time. So he just had a you know badass looking axe. And now he's become a lone wolf. Sometimes he is a a you know, Terminator, but again, different looks for him. I love the fact that I have that that knife on the front of the shield. If he ever loses his axe, he can just simply grab that or whatever he needs to do if he's wrapped up in, in close combat with somebody. He did have some bits from the Forge World uh, Terminator set that came out many, many moons ago. The simple wolf guard with a power weapon could be a frost axe if you want it to be, and a combi class. This is a wolf priest. Uh, I actually usually change up what he has, I usually give him the Krakenborn sword, plus one strength, AP2, and this is the, I usually use his uh, Storm Bolter as the Frost Fury. It's a heavily pointed model, you're talking the Frost Fury is, the Frost Fury is 15 points, Assault 4, Health Frost, Strength 4, AP5, and the Krakenborn sword is uh, 35 points, Strength plus one, AP2, Melee Mastercrafted. But Wolf Priests are just, they're another Force Multiplier in the squad. I do give him Terminator armor, he did, so he's a two up, four up. You know, basically, because I modeled this model like this years ago, and so I gotta find something to, to fit, you know, that rain. I just, uh, when I first built him, I, I was gonna paint him black and then build him up, and then I was like, you know what, he looks pretty cool black. Let me just make him a, uh, a wolf priest, and he's been a wolf priest ever since. He was actually supposed to be the leader of a, of a squad, the same squad as this guy. But he just stayed that way, he had that wolf priest look. And, uh, you know, this guy, I mean, he's, I don't know, probably 10, 15 years old. Whenever this uh, Space Wolf upgrade came out with for Forge World is when he got made back in the day. Here's the Terminator just built using Krom's head, just giving him a more wide gate. Like he's screaming at somebody, some extra little doodads to just make him look a little bit different. You know, he could be a lone wolf in Terminator armor. He does have a younger looking face. Krom's face is, is younger, not as bearded some other guys so just another way to make a more visually interesting model and a little bit different add some variety to my guys all right guys this is going to pretty much wrap up this segment so i just want to leave you with this kind of conversation piece uh, and talk amongst yourself talk about your friends maybe you think of this like i said before we can break down the pros and cons of what optimizes a army list what optimizes a model what gets you your biggest bang for your buck in regards to your points but we can also say this, if we have a variety out there, if we have a character out there that really outshines and outperforms with that dice roll 
he goes he goes up against somebody and does something awesome. Those are the times, the most memorable games that I ever have. The stuff that my buddies and I sit back and say, remember the time when that one guy lasted in that round of combat for three or four turns and just annihilated everybody. You know, that's the stuff that sticks out. Those are the, the moments that make the game fun and entertaining to me, and you never quite know. And it also kind of builds a legacy. Just to give you an example, we had a guy play a Black Templar versus Eldar list. And this Eldar list was pretty optimized. And this one Black Templar Dreadnought survived several attempts to destroy it with even D weapons. And it got to the point where everybody who was playing, and we probably had 20 players here, got to just focusing on this one game because this Dreadnought was just making cover save after cover save. Uh, the Eldar player could not roll that one penetrating roll to do whatever he needed to do to destroy that, that Dreadnought. And that Dreadnought kept on somehow just taking out things with a rending roll from its autocannon after rending roll of its autocannon for about four turns but finally before it finally fell and ended up taking out probably six or seven times its point cost. It was an epic tale. It was fascinating. It was entertaining for the whole crew. And we still talk about that Dreadnought today, that one model that kind of you know, went above and beyond and broke the odds. And that's what makes the game fun. If you optimize your stuff, I kind of really think if you're only focused on optimization of your stuff and you only play models that are the best, you're not, you might not necessarily like their fluff, you might not necessarily like the way they look, in some way and somehow it does kind of take the soul out of the game. So take your time, make visually interesting looking models, paint your stuff, get it out there, have fun, play the stuff that you want to play, and have fun with it. Remember, it's just a game. Leave your thoughts below. Make sure you guys subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments and questions below. And hey, let me know if you guys have any really optimized, awesome models that you guys uh, have named and have special characteristics, and maybe they even act a certain way. You know, So I think that this guy is going to get a name here shortly. And uh, I'll have a little bit of backstory with him. And you never know. Maybe he's the type of guy that always running forward, even when I don't really want him to run forward. That would be an interesting way to play the game. A little bit more role-playing type uh, attitude towards the characters themselves and just what the best thing to, to do is. And that's always fun for me. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Really uh, enjoy it. Make sure you guys check out the Space Wolf blog. Links below. And check out our podcast, Beer and Boulders 40K. Remember, it's not for the faint of heart. If you've got sensitive sensibilities, it's not for you. But we have a great time. Remember, it's mainly for entertainment. Every once in a while, we might educate somebody. Any other comic books or nerd stuff, check out Nerd Raiders Radio with myself and Uncle Skullface. Uh, we usually push that podcast out. All right, thanks, guys. See you soon.